Hi, this is Peter Cracknell of Quantum. I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of how to use an older mount baton uh, with the MBCOM program, particularly the chat mode, where you do not have a normal USB connection. This is an older mount baton pro with a dark blue case. Um, it has no USB, which would be what you'd find on the mount baton LS. It does have a mimic port and that's what we're going to be using to connect to the computer. Of course most modern computers don't have serial ports which is what you would like to have for the mimic connection so what we need to do instead is connect a USB to serial adapter. This is a GUC220A that's commonly available on the internet for about forty dollars or less. Um, so one end is standard USB and the other end now becomes uh, nine pin serial. Okay, so what we do is we connect the USB adapter into the mimic port on the right of the mount baton and then we connect the, um, the USB into the laptop or the PC. The drivers should automatically be detected. Okay, now we then need to run the MBCOM program. I've downloaded the latest 5.54 from the Harpo Mountbattenbrailler.com site. That's Mountbattenbrailler.com and uh, just look for downloads and you can download the latest version of MBCOM. Um, before we do that though, I just, I just want to show you that I want to reset the mount baton to uh, default factory settings so that you can see the stages I'm going to go through here. On the normal MBCOM with a normal MBLS modern mount baton, all of this will happen automatically, but uh, here I'm just going to take it from scratch. So the first thing I need to do is I'm just going to reset the mount baton. This is a hard reset, and these are the keys you need to press here. To, um, to do a reset whilst the machine is turning off. So that's the end key, the enter key, sorry, dot five, command key, and the, and the space bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the mount button, I'm going to form those keys, and then I'm going to switch on the mount button. I can't hold the camera while I'm doing this, so you just have to uh, see what happens. Charging. Mode. Now as you can see when you do that hard reset and uh, the machine goes to learn mode and also the command key is also deactivated. Now we do need that command key so to re-enable the command key we need to press left function, new line, space and right function together. I don't think I'll be able to do this with one hand so again I'll just pause and the mount button says command on. Now that the command key is on, I can issue the ADV or advanced mode setting because we need the machine to be in advanced mode to do this communication. Uh, okay, so I press the command key. Command. And then A. A. D. D. It's a bit hard to do the V with one hand, just one moment. So I issued command A, D, V and then the enter key and it's now switched advanced mode on. Now that's on um, I can then now move over to MBCOM on here and uh, go into chat mode and all those sorts of things. Okay so what do we do is we run the, um, the MBCOM program. I'm going to run it as administrator because I, this machine doesn't have full admin rights so I'm going to make sure that it, I'm, I'm running it as administrator. And the first thing we need to do in MBCOM is we need to go to, you'll notice that there is two red dots for uh, the Mimic disconnected and the mount baton disconnected. So we're going to just connect the device and that's like this device, connect mount baton and here it says, in this case on this machine, COM9 something and that's the one we want and OK. And it says, before continuing, check this paper in, yes. And you'll notice that as it's communicating, the lights will go green in the top right corner. 
and now we have a connected mount baton and the embosser is on. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into chat mode, file, chat mode. Now if I had a modern MBLS then I would um, have automatic back and forward translation but I don't and this is the whole issue. So we need to actually issue commands between each communication. So we have this process where I'm typing on the computer I want it to forward translate in contracted grade 2 onto the mount baton. But the reverse process where the child is brailing here, I want it to be back translated into ordinary print on the MBCOM session. Okay, So I need to issue commands each step of the way between the two things. So if I am communicating from the um, uh, from the mount, uh, from the computer to the mount button, I need to issue the forward translation enable command, and that command is F E for forward enable, and I can issue that from the keyboard. I can either do it by pressing Escape F E and then End, or I could press the curly brace and the right curly brace in place of those, uh, the escape and the end. Um, so because I'm just holding the, the, uh, the camera and the, uh, and the uh, typing at the same time, I'll, I will use the escape command. So here we go. Escape. You heard the mount pattern do a beep. Then I go F, E, end. Now I should have forward translation. So let's say I type something like, hello for starters. You'll notice that the mount baton is not embossing because it won't emboss until I issue a couple of enter keys. Then it can do the translation process And uh, you'll notice that, uh, if you can see that, uh, we have hello, for sign, S-T-A-R-T-E-R-S. -E so we've got contracted Braille there. Good. So that was the forward translation working. Now it's, let's say we want the child to type something back. So this is, let's do it incorrectly first without issuing any commands. Let me just do the for sign now. And I do a couple of carriage returns, and you'll see that is not correct. And indeed on the screen, you'll see that it's come up with an equal sign. This is because um, we haven't got the back translation switched on yet. So, what's the command to switch on back translation? Back translation, of course, is the process of going back from, um, from Braille to print. Well, the command is mimic, M-I-M-I-C. So let's do it with escape keys again. Escape, M-I-M-I-C, and end. Don't forget, it's not enter, but end. So now, if I repeat that, and I'll do the for sign, prove it, there's the for sign, and I'll do a couple of new lines, and then on the screen now I have the for, the FOR properly back translated. Okay, so the child is, is, can type as much as they like, as long as they just finish off with a couple of new lines on the mount button, then it'll come out um, onto the computer. So I'll just type a little bit more in Braille, and we'll see what happens. And so this is how it came out, of course it's just gibberish, but for you that is a that this is a test, sorry about that. And then of course here on the braille we go for you that is a test. So we can see that the back translation is working correctly but remember now with say the teacher we do need to issue the, um, the uh, mimic command and the FE command. 
So here again we go escape M I M I C end and then we do escape F E end and now we should be able to type something and as you'll notice here it's not actually doing anything for the for the test until I do a couple of carriage returns and there we go for the test so you can see that the mimic command is, is a toggle on off uh, so the sequence should always be um, for the um, forward translation from the computer to the mount button. Uh, if you're in a sequence, it'll be mimic FE. And then coming back this way, it'll just be mimic. The mimic command turns off the, the FE command anyway. Okay, so that's just the sequence you need to remember when you're communicating between the computer the mount button, the mount button and the computer when using MBCOM on an old MB Pro um, with, with, uh, using the latest uh, MBCOM. Okay, good luck guys.